Welcome to prefabricated structures. Today's video is related to joints in structural members, module number four. So we are in the module number four. So what are the things? So joint in structural members. We all know that the joints are there. So joints between beams, columns, footings, and sometimes walls and beams, walls and columns. So joints and connections must be designed to adequately transfer the loads. For what reason? We have to prepare them adequately transfer the loads. Okay, from a precast concrete element to the supporting structure to the supporting structure or to an adjacent element to form the stocks. They have to meet the design and performance criteria so we need to understand what is the design and performance performance and design such as we can say strength should be there ductility should be there they need to have a fire resistance they must also know the durability stability so all these five criteria have to meet in the design as well as in the performance of the structure then only we can easily say that apart from these structural requirements due to considerations okay should be given to the production and erection so we are most important at this point because if production and erection is not correct in the process we are not able to have the exact joint in the structural members okay so to achieve practical and satisfactory con connections so practical and satisfactory connections the following items should be considered in the design so before entering to the joint what preliminary part is most important standardize the joint and connection types and details we need to make it standardized avoid congestion at joints so there should not be any congestion at joints avoid penetration of forms means we need not be allowed it should be penetrated it should be easily acceptable joint we should not be forcing the element to fix it on that particular member or any other part of connections allow for production and erection tolerances we need to allow it for the production and erection tolerances plan for easy assembly and accessibility we need to also plan related to easy and assembly of easy accessibility so the vehicle sometimes comes and sometimes the congestion will happen so these all points are to be considered before we do this for the jointings then importances of joints in precast structures what is the most important part we need to consider when the joints in precast structures are to be considered so cast in situ structures joints are provided to relieve the stresses so we need to understand to relieve the stresses due to temperature and shrinkage and also accommodate the construction sequence for placement of a concrete but in case of precast apart from the above reason we require joints to connect various elements of structures as of we are going to achieve these all also we need to make only one single joint will be there if i take a consideration so here is a beam connection and here is a column connection here one more beam connection will be there and another beam connection so we if we take a single column or <coughs> a column may be taken from here to here then another column and the third column but here the joint whenever it comes here the two parts are joined with one single element so this joint will become as a tedious one so when it becomes tedious in that time we need to understand how it will be clear so expansion joints as <coughs> excuse so here some of the expansion joints will be there so there will be opening of the joints expansion joints are there when it becomes a jointing there will be small amount of opening so this amount of opening we provide it for the expansions only so expansion joints are provided because of the temperatures and shrinkages are going to occur temperature and shrinkage going to occur that time we need to consider the expansion joints so this is an assembly designed to safely absorb 
the heat induced expansion and contraction of various construction materials to absorb absorb very vibration or to allow movement during the ground settlement during the ground settlement or earthquake they are commonly found between sections of sidewalks bridges where we can find these expansion units railway tracks piping systems and other type of structures we are easily knowing these particular types of structures clear <coughs> then need for expansion joint is what what is the need why we require this is most important so expansion joints are necessary in precast in order to allow for the expansion and cooling of various members due to changing in temperature as mentioned due to temperature we need to understand so in precast structures the shrinkage takes place the shrinkage takes place before the assembling of members before the assembling of members therefore spacing of expansion spacing of expansion joints may be 1.5 to 2 times 1.5 to 2 times greater than in a monolithic structure so we have a more amount of expansion joint in the precast member they are usually formed at a joint of roofing members and main girders they are actually found at roofing members and main girders so if we take a slab okay so in this particular slab we are not able to get the slab of totally 6 meter by 6 meter so what we will do we will take a panel wise so panel is divided so let us take here six panels like that that is divided so each panel so single single panel so now this single panel we need to join so when we are joining these two single panels it will be in a type of expansion joint in between them so here we will get a small amount of expansion joint so this expansion joint will lead to expansion and cooling of a various members due to the temperature changes due to the temperature changes now connections in a precast members to overcome we need to these are the operational difficulties these are the operational difficulties to overcome the operational difficulties the member are disunited into disunited means disjointed into smaller elements connections are used to get required structures by joining the separate smaller elements by joining the separate smaller elements then connections smaller elements so this part we will take it to different types of connections which are the different types of connections first is rigid joint what is the rigid joint it can take rigid joint can take tensile compressive shear bending moment then relative rotation relative displacement are impossible then generally used for junction of columns or footings they are used for the junction of columns and footings because we require the rigid joints at these particular connections for joining of individual members to each other also sometimes we require the rigid joints rigid joints they are once fixed it cannot be dismantled to dismantle them again we need to make a this connections such as we have to prepare some breaking instruments to dismantle them then comes limitation requires considerable manpower and hence minimum application is available other than that it is easily possible then second is hinge like joint hinge like joint can transmit force passing through hinges itself hinge is simple we can say this is the hinge joint easily understandable also allows certain motion rotation rotation is there motion is there and also passes the force joints used in precast members are usually like a hinge only requires less working time than that of rigid joints execution is simpler execution is most simpler then comes short joints used in industrial construction used in industrial construction and used for long span only used for long long span only 
chiefly used in bridge construction these are used only in the bridge construction for long span bridges then comes dry joints joints accomplished by simple placing of two members on each other and then fastening them called as dry joint structure becomes immediately loose bearing that is easily dismantleable wet joints joint requiring not only casting a cement mortar but also a subsequent concreting is called wet joint is called wet joint in this wet joint casting cement mortar and we need to make a concreting example when rigid joint is formed generally the lengthening of steel bars is by joining the members or by overlapping welding them while the discontinuity is avoided by skillful subsequent concreting is called wet joint so we need to <coughs> allow a reinforcement as we have seen nowadays if a construction is going on <laughs> that time the column is there in this column the particular reinforcements are provided so after the column construction is there reinforcements are left open why they are left open we can make a connection here we can easily make a connection here so this becomes a monolithical connection similarly in precast also we will be able to get some reinforcement out of this then uh, another element is going to be placed on it and it is fixed in this particular part that is the thing <coughs> then adequate for a bearing of greater force structure assembled used a wet joint have a monolithic character wet joints comply with character of <coughs> material of structure to be joined this all comes under wet joints thank you and see you in the next video of joints in structural members